Hey, Frontline fans, welcome back to Comic Frontline. And fans, you're back for another episode of Spider Slayer's Hole. That's right, guys. This is episode number 23 and the video series where I show you each and every week the comic books that I picked up at the comic book store. Now, just to let you guys know, no DC Rebirth this week. It's like they took a day off or a week off. And next week, I'm sure we're going to be bombarded with a ton of Rebirth. So what did I get since there was no DC Comics? And I'm not getting that much Marvel these days. Well, I guess this week there might be a more heavily uh, Marveled week. So here is the Black Mysterious bag of comics. So we're going to sit here and get the comics out. And hopefully I don't ruin my comics in the process. All right. All right, here we go. So bags on the floor. All right. First things first, I wound up getting... Jeez, what a mess. All right, bags and boards, got to move those. All right, next I get this oversized thing out of the way. Uh, Image Plus Previews Guide, as it shows you all the books that are coming out for Image Comics. Uh, it gives you an idea of all the awesome independent books out there. And it also has Here's Negan, uh, Part 5 in there too. If you guys haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out. Each month I cover... Uh, the part of Here's Negan. So that's the Image Plus magazine. Uh, next thing I wound up getting is um, The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 17. This is before Dead No More. Really loved the last issue of uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm interested to see what this book has to offer for its readers. This is interesting. I didn't know that, but there's a female Electro on here now. What the hell is that about? Is it Max Dillon's sister? Like, What's going on here? Is there a long lost relative that we didn't know about? So yeah, this is the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 17. Next, we wind up getting the all new Wolverine Annual issue number one. Really excited about this book. It's got Spider-Gwen in it. I love uh, all new Wolverine for what it is. Uh, Tom Taylor knows how to write this character and I love the artwork in it. This is a Badass cover. I love the freaking the Wolverine itself in here. I forgot the dude's name, but really great looking book. So can't wait to read this first annual for the series. Next, we wind up getting Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, issue number 11. I love the artist on this uh, particular book that's doing this issue. It's uh, Valer Valerio Schitty. Um, I think the artwork is good. I look at the facial expressions there on Thing. Uh, I think he looks awesome in here. Uh, not sure where we're going to go with uh, with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I, I heard there's like a final story arc coming out or whatnot, but really nice looking cover. Can't wait to see what happens there. So it's Guardians of the Galaxy, issue number 11. Next we go with the independent book, and this is Jupiter's Legacy, issue number 2. Or it, Gee whiz, Jupiter Legacies 2. Issue number three. Really well done series. Um, love the artwork in this book especially. There's always so much attention to detail in it. The characters look so real. Um, I love the facial expressions in here. and Even the facial hair looks pretty awesome too. So really great stuff in here. Can't wait to see uh, what this next part has in store uh, for Jupiter's Legacy. Alright, next we have... Another one of my favorite covers this month, and it's uh, Miss Marvel issue 10, uh, Civil War 2 tie-in, which I feel this has a great impact for the character because her idol is um, Captain Marvel. Uh, I love the cover, how everything is like shattered in the background. She's looking down. But the thing I like is the over-exaggeration of the scarf. I love that. It's just something that's so pivotal for her costume. I think if you took away that scarf, it would it, it just wouldn't be quite the same. So I really love that. So this is Miss Marvel issue number 10. All right, next we have another book that continues to talk about finding his father. He's been finding his father since the last volume, and we're on issue number 10 on this one. Uh, nevertheless, though, it is a good book. It's very grounded. It almost reminds me a little bit of Invincible in the way as he goes to space, and then he comes back down, and he has to deal with his family. His mom works, and his sister goes to school, and he has to babysit his sister. So I love all those family elements of this series. So it's a really good book if you guys haven't read it. Maybe the storyline may be a little bit repetitious, but the character never gets old. So this is Nova issue number 10. 
Next is a book that I decided to continue. We'll see how it how it ends up. This is Predator uh, and versus Judge Dredd versus Alien. So I think last issue we wound up seeing a scientist that found a way to bring back the aliens, and now there's the alien that's going to come back, and then there's going to be the Predator and Judge Dredd's going. I have no idea what's going to happen in this book, but I just get it because it's fun. Uh, I like the Predator in the back. That's pretty cool. It's very nostalgic. It's just something I've, you know, grown up with, you know, in my life. John Layman's the writer of it. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, Predators versus Judge Jed versus Aliens. All right. Next we have, <coughs> excuse me, Saga, chapter number 37. This book comes back after a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I don't even remember what happened at the end of the last chapter, so I'll have to catch up with it, but it looks like there's just a big war on the cover between the, the two species or whatnot. And we saw Alano and Marco, I think they wound up getting back together and they wound up reuniting with the baby. So overall though, this is a fun book, really good book. Uh, read every single issue. I just don't like the long breaks. I always tend to forget what goes on because I read so many books each month. So this is Saga, Chapter 37. Next, I don't know why I continue to buy this. This is Spider-Man 2099, issue number 14. I feel that the, the characters are just so forgettable, and I don't like the villains because they're just there, right? It's just they're cheap knockoffs for me, I guess, from the characters that we know from Spider-Man. I get that they're in the future, but... It's just, it doesn't work for me. They don't make Miguel any better of a character. And uh, and in this issue, it looks like we have Punisher 2099 in here. And, of course, it's a Civil War II tie-in. So, um, again, we'll see where it goes. Uh, Spider-Man 2099, issue number 14. Next is Spider-Man issue 7, Civil War II tie-in. As we see Miles Morales on a building just holding his head, doesn't know what to do. Um, I love the last issue of this actual book. Um, check out this page right here. That looks awesome right there. Really good looking book. What's all that about inside it? I uh, can't wait to actually read this and see what's going on. Uh, we had Jessica Jones doing research on him or, or investigating him, trying to find out that if he's, you know, you know, Spider-Man or not. So did the mom find out? Just a lot of stuff going on here. So Spider-Man issue number seven, one of the books that's not shipped twice a month. All right. Next, we have uh, a couple independent books here. Uh, Tokyo Ghost issue number 10. This is the conclusion to this. Uh this book just really kicked ass. I love Sean Murphy's artwork. It's a beautiful looking cover on here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, again, how all this comes to a close. I will miss this series. So this is Tokyo Ghost, um, issue number 10. Hard to believe it's 10 issues of that. Next is another independent book. It's called Horizon. This is issue number two. I read the first one digitally. Kind of liked it. Wanted to see what number two had to offer. Um, pretty interesting cover. If you look at it, it kind of looks like a skeleton up here. So that's really neat. And it's about this alien that's come to Earth and she's got to do like this mission. She had to put this implant in her brain to understand English. Really out there. So I want to see where it goes from here. So Horizon, issue number two. Next is a book I think a lot of people are... Uh, anticipating in this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles universe. It's a five dollar uh, price point. Uh, it's made by IDW. It looks like the same artist that did it with the uh, TMNT Batman series. Um, really interesting here. Uh, artwork, interior artwork looks pretty nice. If you guys haven't seen it yet, here's a little preview of it as we get to see our turtles investigating. Uh, yeah, you know, what's, what's going to happen in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles universe? I'm not sure. Here we got a little bit of April O'Neil. I don't know. We'll find out. So hopefully it's worth the $5 price tag, and hopefully I'll continue to read it. And last but not least, everybody, I wound up finding an old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book. Uh, you don't find them that often, and so I decided to pick this one up. It's Eastern and Mint Laird's, obviously, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number 15. This book was printed in 1988. This is the... Original, this is the first printing of this book. Um, it was pretty funny because 
just the way it looks, you think it's all torn and messed up, and you think that there's tape in it. And you know what? I looked at it for a while, and I'm like, ah, it's all messed up looking. I don't. I'm like, I don't know if I, I feel that it's really worth it. So I literally, I took it out of the out of the bag and board to look at the condition that it was in when I was at the comic shop. And I'm like, oh wait, it's actually in really good condition. There's no tape. There's no nothing on it. It's just made to look like a, a tattered comic book. And I thought that was really awesome. But when you look at the inside of the book, you wind up getting to see that it is in pretty good shape. All the pages are white. Uh, here we get to see some of that original artwork from back in the day um, when it comes to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And still even here, this is a little bit more modernized than the original you know, issues one through five, the ones that are really rare and really hard to find. So, uh, But nevertheless, I was really happy to find this and, and put this in my collection. And uh, so, yeah, so there you have it, guys. There is the haul for this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So now it's your guys' turn to uh, leave in the comments below which books you picked up, which ones you're most excited for, which ones you're not so excited for. And uh, fans, this has been Spider Slayer's Hall, episode number 23. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye.